What's going on guys, it's your boy Brad and I'm back with another video and in this video what I want to talk about is the Renin Angiotensin Aldosterone System. This is a pretty important uh, system to become familiar with. This is going to be another installment in my Made Easy series trying to give you guys videos to help you succeed in nursing school. But really this applies to many other fields. Many people out there need to study this anyways. It's an important endocrine type of system to become familiar with. It really helps you understand those, uh, you know, the mechanisms of action for those cardiac medications whenever you're studying pharmacology. And it's just something to become familiar with and understanding how the body regulates blood pressure. So before I dive right into this, I wanna give you a little bit of background. What is the purpose of the RAA system? Okay, well, as I've already alluded to, it's important for main maintaining a stable blood pressure within the body. This is something that is always active to some degree. The overall goal of this system is vasoconstriction. That's what the whole thing does. It constricts those blood vessels in order to raise the blood pressure. Now, like I said, this is always active to some degree. If you think about it, it's just like the muscles in your body. You may be sitting there at rest, but there is some, still some sort of tonicity in your muscles. That's what keeps your body upright. Whenever you're sitting in a chair, for instance, you might be relaxed, but your muscles are still flexed to some degree or else you would just fall over. Same thing with this system. It is always active in the background to some degree. If it was not, vasoconstriction wouldn't happen at all. They would be completely dilated and your blood pressure would uh, plummet. So now that you have that piece of information in mind, the main objective is vasoconstriction to maintain blood pressure. Let's look at it like this, okay? The main two mechanisms, this is a two-pronged attack to maintain vaso or to achieve vasoconstriction two-pronged attack. So let's look at the A. That's what it is, okay? Think of A, you think of attack. This is the mechanism by which it does it. Angiotensin and aldosterone. So let's go ahead and dive into this. Let's go through the system, explain it to you, help you have a good idea of it, and hopefully this helps you understand the RAA system and helps you ace those exams when it comes to cardiac meds and it just gives you a better understanding of how the body maintains homeostasis in regards to blood pressure. All right, now I'm not the best artist in the world, but this hopefully gives you a general idea. So uh, what I wanna do though, is I wanna look at this um, from the point of view of a specific pathophysiology, if you will. So uh, the importance of this, as we've said, is vasoconstriction. And like I've said, it's always uh, there working to some minor degree in the background. But this especially becomes active and is important whenever you start thinking about pathology. So what I wanna think about, for instance, as our example, is uh, heart failure, okay? The important thing about heart failure, what you need to know, this is just general information, is that basically some degree the myocardium, the muscle of the heart is failing. Therefore, it's not efficiently able to pump blood out of the body, or sorry, out of the heart to the body. Okay, because of that, what you have is a reduced cardiac output. If you are not able to pump blood to the body uh, proficiently, you basically, your, your tissues aren't getting the blood and oxygen and nutrients that they require. What this does, if you can think about it, if you're not able to pump out enough blood, your blood pressure decreases, right? Okay, now, like I said, the RAA system is responsible for vasoconstriction and bringing up that blood pressure. So if you have heart failure, your blood pressure is going to be decreased, okay? Now, the only reason that the RAA system is activated, yes, the blood pressure is decreased and that's the reason, but specifically it is the kidney that initiates this entire system. So what happens here, whenever your blood pressure drops and the you know your body uh, senses that, your brain senses it, sends a signal to the kidney that we need to initiate the RAA system. So the very first thing that happens is the liver produces angiotensinogen. Now angiotensinogen is basically an inactive peptide. It's not capable of vasoconstriction or anything like that. It's just like um, pepsinogen in the stomach. You know, for instance, that cinogen at the end, it's just, it's inactive, okay? The first thing that happens is the liver produces angiotensinogen. The next thing that happens is the kidney produces renin. Now, what renin does is renin comes in 
and you can essentially think of it as it splits angiotensinogen in half. I'm not gonna go super deep into this. This is primarily for my nursing students out there and uh, just to give you an overall broad view of how this works. So you can think of renin coming in and it is responsible for splitting angiotensinogen in half, okay? That part doesn't matter. What it leaves you with, however, is angiotensin one, okay? So the liver produces angiotensinogen in response to the kidneys not receiving enough blood, not receiving enough perfusion, the blood pressure has dropped, produces angiotensinogen, the kidney produces renin, renin chops angiotensinogen in half, producing angiotensin one. Okay, so now that we have angiotensin one, the next step in this RAA system is that angiotensin one by itself is not a vasoconstrictor. It is also like angiotensinogen still inactive. It still needs to go undergo further converting before it can become the vasoconstrictor that we need it to be in order to raise that blood pressure, which is our problem right now. So how does this happen? The lungs produce an enzyme that we call ACE. This stands for angiotensin converting enzyme. Now, what angiotensin converting enzyme does is exactly what it sounds like it does. It converts angiotensin 1 into angiotensin 2. So, angiotensin converting enzyme is primarily made in the pulmonary circuit in the, within the lungs, and it is essential for converting angiotensin 1 into angiotensin 2. And it is at this point that angiotensin 2 you finally have the hormone or protein that you need in order to get that vasoconstriction that's necessary. So at this point, now that we have angiotensin two, we now have what we need in order to produce vasoconstriction. So how does this happen? This is a blood vessel, <laughs> okay? Within here, with on the blood vessel, on the vasculature within the body, you have angiotensin receptors, okay? So essentially what you can imagine happens is angiotensin II binds with the angiotensin receptors on the vasculature throughout the body, and this is what causes vasoconstriction. So once that happens, once the A2 binds to the angiotensin receptors, blood vessels constrict, and this is one of the two mechanisms by which the RAA system produces vasoconstriction and raises blood pressure. Now, much in the same way that the kidneys not receiving enough blood caused the RAA system to activate, the binding of angiotensin II to the angiotensin receptors initiates the aldosterone portion of this RAA system. If you remember, I said it was a two-pronged attack, angiotensin and aldosterone, the two A's, the A2 binding to the angiotensin receptors initiates the aldosterone portion of this RAA system. So once the angiotensin II binds to the angiotensin receptors on the vasculature and produces that vasoconstriction, the next thing that happens is that initiates the adrenal gland, which sits on top of the kidney. If you remember from anatomy and physiology, it looks like that little pad of adipose tissue on top of the kidneys. The adrenal gland produces aldosterone. Now, if you also remember from an AMP, aldosterone is responsible for causing the kidneys to reabsorb sodium ions. And it also causes the kidneys, so let's just say it's reabsorbing sodium ions into the body as opposed to excreting them through urine. And it also causes the kidney to excrete potassium ions. Now, if you remember from fluid and electrolytes, Whenever, wherever sodium goes, water follows. So if aldosterone gets released by the adrenal gland and aldosterone tells the kidneys to reabsorb sodium ions, then water is going to be reabsorbed as well. And once water gets reabsorbed, this all gets reabsorbed into the vasculature, water gets reabsorbed into the vasculature, 
And this is our second mechanism of increasing the blood pressure within the body. So let's recap this one time for you guys, just to make sure you got it down pat. So remember our patho, our patho for this whole thing was heart failure. The, the cardiac output was not enough to efficiently perfuse the tissues. So what we had was hypotension because we had poor cardiac output and low blood pressure. The kidney was not receiving enough blood, enough oxygen, enough nutrients. So this initiated the entire RAA system. First thing that happened was the liver released angiotensinogen and the kidney released renin. Renin came in and chopped angiotensin in half, leaving you with just angiotensin one. At this point, the lungs produced angiotensin converting enzyme, and this came in and converted angiotensin one to angiotensin two. And it was at this point that we now had the powerful vasoconstrictor that we needed. Angiotensin two now binds with the angiotensin receptors on the vasculature and produces that, that powerful vasoconstriction, increasing the blood pressure. The A2 binding with the angiotensin receptors caused the adrenal gland to release aldosterone and aldosterone caused the kidneys to reabsorb sodium, thus reabsorbing H2O all back into the vasculature another secondary means of increasing the blood pressure. So now if you think about it, all of this will make much more sense now. If you're thinking about pharmacology, thinking about the medications for cardiac, ACE inhibitors. In your mind, what do ACE inhibitors do? ACE inhibitors inhibit angiotensin converting enzyme from ever converting angiotensin one into angiotensin two. And we know ACE inhibitors are antihypertensives well, if angiotensin one gets converted into A2, then you have vasoconstriction and increased blood pressure. You give an ACE inhibitor to cancel out that conversion so that you don't ever get that powerful vasoconstrictor so that blood pressure doesn't increase. The other one that you can think about is ARBs, ARBs, okay? Angiotensin receptor blockers. Also, this is an antihypertensive medication. What does that do in your mind? It blocks those angiotensin receptors ever. It never allows angiotensin two. So even though angiotensin converting enzyme can still convert A1 to A2, the ARBs prevent A2 from ever binding with those receptors. Therefore, vasoconstriction never occurs. So that is why this RAA system is so important. Not only is it important for understanding how the body homeostatically maintains blood pressure within the body, but it's also very important to understand how it activates in systems, uh, you know, in instances of pathology, such as the heart failure. And it's also important for understanding how these medications really act on the body to give you a very firm foundation of knowledge for how all of this works. And it's also important to know that if you block those angiotensin receptors, with those ARB medications, aldosterone never gets released by the adrenal gland as well. So that's another connection you can make in your mind. Anyways, guys, I really hope this video was helpful. You know, just remember how important this is and that it's a two pronged attack, angiotensin and aldosterone. Be sure to subscribe if you enjoyed the video, guys. I'm putting out videos every week trying to help you obtain your dreams of becoming a nurse. And I hope to put out many more educational videos like this to really help you guys grasp those tough concepts that we need to know in nursing school. If you have any suggestions for any kind of video that you would like to see in the future, be sure to leave me a comment down below. Share this video with all of your fellow classmates who might need help understanding this. We're all in this journey together, guys, but together we will succeed. It's Nurse Bass soon to be, and I'll catch y'all in the next video. Peace.